So in this lesson, we're going to talk about linear programming. And basically, everything we've done so far has led up to us talking about linear programming. And when we talk about linear programming, it's basically going to be a, it's a mathematical technique that we use to minimize and maximize linear functions. In our case, because this is a business course and because you're talking about business, we normally want to minimize our costs and maximize our profit. In order to do that, we look at what's called the objective function. So we're going to look at this thing that we call the objective function here. And the objective function is going to be written as a, it's a variable, it's a function of defining, or that includes both the variables of interest in our case. And we're going to define the objective as P or Z. P standing for profit, and Z is just another letter we use. Um, it usually pertains to profit or cost, and we want to find what's called the optimal solution. And the optimal solution is going to either maximize or minimize those particular things. And so um, these variables that we create, they're called the decision variables. And the decision variables themselves are going to be based on the constraints in the problem. So whatever those, cons those constraints are, we're going to use that to create our decisions. Now, there are one, there's also one set of constraints that are always given to us. And those constraints are what we call our non-negative constraints. And the non-negative constraints are always going to be defined as whatever your two variables are, they have to be greater than or equal to zero. And what that does is that always graphs us in the first quadrant. That means you have to make something. So when we always are going to have two variables that are going to rate as x greater than or equal to zero and y greater than or equal to zero. And these are called our non-negative constraints, and we have to have those for every problem. So let's go through an example of how we actually use all this stuff. So we're going to go in um, for the following linear programming problems, define the decision variables, write the problem constraints, and give the objective function. So this says a calculator company produces scientific calculators and a graphing calculator. Long-term projections indicate an expected demand of at least 100 scientific and 80 gra graphing calculators each day because of limitations on production capacity. No more than 200 scientific and 170 graph graphing calculators can be made daily. To satisfy a shipping contract, a total of at least 200 calculators must be shipped each day. And each if each scientific calculator result results in $2 loss, but each graphing calculator reduces a $5 profit, how many of each type should be made daily to maximize net profits? So it's a lot to go through, but we want to break this problem down. The first thing we're going to do is identify the variables. And we know that we have two types of calculators. We have a scientific calculator, which we'll call X. And we have a graphing calculator, which we'll call Y. So X equals my scientific calculator. And Y is equal to my graphing calculator. And it tells me this in the first part, first part long-term predictions indicate an expected demand of at least 100 scientific calculators. So this right here is saying that I have to make at least 100 scientific calculators and at least 80 graphing calculators each day. So I can already write a constraint for that which says x has to be at least means greater than or equal to 100 and y has to be greater than or equal to 80. But they also put another limitation which says that you can't make any more, no more than 200 scientific and 170 graphing. So that gives me these other constraints that say x has to be less than or equal to 200, and y has to be less than or equal to 170. Now, we can condense this and make it look a little bit better by putting x in between those two values. So basically, x has to be between 100 and 200, and y has to be between 80 and 170. So we can write that literally like this. That's the first one. That's saying that X is between 100 and 200 scientific calculators that, can, that have to be made. And Y is in between 80 and 170. So there are two of your constraints. It also says to satisfy a shipping contract, a total of at least 200 calculators must be shipped each day. So we have to make, when we ship these calculators as scientific and graphic calculators, we have to ship at least 200 of them. So that's another equation we can create where we're saying x, which are scientific calculators, plus y, which are graphing calculators, that has to be at least 200. At least means greater than or equal to 200. So here are your constraints. Here are your constraints. And the other thing we need are non-negative constraints, which say that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. We have to make scientific calculators. And y has to be greater than or equal to 0. We have to make graphing calculators. So here are the problem constraints. Now, the last thing I need is going to be the profit function. 
So I need a profit function, or I need, in this case, this profit, because I want to know, I want to maximize. Notice the objective here is to maximize. That's why I said I need a profit function. If we want to minimize, we'll talk about a cost function. So we can call it Z or P. I like to call it Z, but you'll see some places call it P. But well, we want to maximize net profits, maximize net profits. We know that this is a $2 loss for every scientific calculator, and there's a $5 profit for each graphing calculator. So to do this, and we create the new function, that means that Z, the profit function, is equal to $2 loss minus 2x, $5 profit plus 5y. So this is going to be our objective function here. This is the objective. Here are the constraints. Here are your decision variables. And now the goal is going to be to maximize this objective function. 